All right, what's going on, y'all? Good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday. One second over here. All right. All right, we should be good. Good morning, guys. How's everybody feeling? Good morning, good morning. Yesterday was interesting. Um, we had a long session. It was like two hours. And uh, obviously, I know many of you were on at the beginning of the session when we took the loss on SPX. Um, and then some of you had to go and hop off. But we did end up making it back. We hit TP2. Um, then got stopped at break even. Basically, on this pull up right here is what got us out at break even. Uh, this is the one hour chart, by the way. So it might look a little different, but we did get that sell off, as you guys can see. Uh, we were bearish all yesterday. Didn't expect a huge range because of OPEC meetings uh, and FOMC meeting minutes, and that's pretty much exactly what we got. Pretty much a ranged up seek and destroy condition day, and now things are opening up a little bit. We do have some news to be concerned about here in about three minutes, but we already had <clears throat> non-farm employment change come out. That came out uh, bullish for the dollar. So actual greater than forecast is good for currency. That's bearish for um, these indices. That's why we see this thing selling off as we speak. We're going to wait for uh, ISM and Jolt's job openings for this, uh, uh, you know, for the session. And we're going to wait and see how that comes out. But yeah, we've pushed down into some interesting levels. If I were to range this up from the swing low all the way to the high, we are already in a discounted price range now. We worked through that that daily fair value gap. This was going to be the inverse of that, and that's obviously been um, traded through already. And it looks like this candle on the one hour will be closing pretty strong through there. So for that reason, going to delete this uh, fair value gap from our chart, but it's the daily fair value gap. And then this is a daily order block that I think this is where we could potentially see a bounce. Let me come up here to the daily time frame quick. Get some of that out of the way. Uh, let me zoom in for you guys. But yeah, basically this is the order block which led to this new high being put in right here. So this is going to be the order block where I'm expecting a bounce. It's an order block inside of a, a discounted price range. So we'll have to see what kind of schematic we can get to form here on these lower time frames if and when we tap into that. But we are in a discount already. So, you know, at this point, it's um, it's basically going to be just waiting for our setup. And then if we go to regular trading hours, obviously, as you guys can see, this is um, the huge opening range gap that was left behind. So if we go ahead and mark that out, just because we'll probably be referencing it uh, today during the session. So... We'll mark this out. This is the opening range gap low. Here is the opening range gap high. So let's mark these out. Opening range gap high. <clears throat> All right, boom. And then opening range gap low. All right, so, and then real interesting here, this is actually the opening range gap uh, from last week, one of them. I'm just gonna drag it over to where price currently is just because, um, you know, again, price likes to re-deliver to these areas and just to annotate that we did get back to here. Um, you know, we've already delivered price to the upside and now this is the first delivery down in this in this range. So yeah, just uh, just worth annotating, but not really anything beyond that, to be honest. So, yeah, just kind of waiting to see if we tap into this daily order block, guys. Uh, we are in a discount, like I said, and we're waiting for the news release. Let me jump back here to electronic trading hours. But, yeah, if you guys were trading London session, let me know. I know we got some people on here that, that trade London. I'm going to delete this as well. Um, yeah, so here's today's opening range gap low. This is, this is the old one. So I'll just drag this over so it's out of our way. <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we know that we're in discount, so let's actually just go ahead and I'm just going to delete this for now. But yeah, let's go see where, so London session, especially if you guys do silver bullet hour, that's three to four for, or no, I'm sorry, that's two to three for me, right? Or is it three for four? God, I don't even know. Shows how much I trade London session. But yeah, it looks like you got a nice liquidity run here, market structure shift below here, boom, 
fair value gap. You would have held some chop, but it looks like that would have been an easy entry. Easy enough, at least, where if you were bearish, you could have caught this. Oh, my God. Struggle bus over here. But yeah, let me know. Let me know. Did you guys trade London? Anybody trade London? Was everybody fast asleep? Man, the chat's quiet today. Where are you guys at? You guys alive? Needed sleep, traded it a bit, traded London, but missed everything. <laughs> uh, sleepy, J Mark. I feel that. I feel that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm excited to get through this week. I'm excited to get through this week and get back into some normal, some normal price action. News came out, guys. It came out um, <clears throat> bullish for the indices bearish for the dollar but this came out opposite so this is kind of a wash um so i'm just going to stick to what i'm seeing on the chart and not really reference the uh the news all that much to be honest but yeah let's see guys let's see if we can get a little retracement back down into this uh, well not a little retracement just a continuation down to this daily order block and then i'd like to see the bounce from there ppi and cpi next week great those are our favorite those are our favorite They've uh, they've been good to us. We um, did we have we taken a loss? I think we took a loss on PPI last month. But every other every other news release this year, CPI and PPI speaking, is we've we've been able to walk away in green, usually with all take profits being hit. So yeah, PPI PPI last month was the first PPI we've actually lost month of June. But um, but yeah, it was a little bit trickier. Not to not to make any excuses for us, but a little bit trickier. There's a lot going on. Obviously, we had the contracts rolling over kind of at that same time. You guys remember? So it was a really interesting week. I'm not even going to blame it all on PPI because I think there was other factors that um, just made conditions a little less probable. I don't know if it was PPI's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, fought, we fought a couple of trend days. I know. I know, I know, I know. But yeah, guys, so this is what I'm looking at for today. Let's go ahead, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collapse the chat and the participants list here for a second so I can see all of this. But uh, let's do this. Get my big mug out of the way. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. So let's jump up here to the... This is wrong. I don't want to look at Dow. I want to look at NQ. All right, so here we are in the hourly time frame. I'm just checking to see if we have any higher time frame SMT forming whatsoever. It looks like we really don't right now. To be honest, I mean, there was bearish SMT. You guys can see here on NQ. Higher high here, lower high here, which makes sense, I guess, why NQ was a little bit cleaner yesterday for the sell-off because we found SMT on the lower time frames on like the 15-minute. However, higher time frames hold higher power, so I guess now this makes sense. I'm just seeing this for the first time. So that makes sense. And then let's look at Dow quickly. Same exact thing here. SMT there. But yeah, no no bullish SMT on this time frame. So let's jump down a little bit. 15, yeah, we're not going to see much. Not going to see much. So yeah, we got to wait. There's, there's no SMT to factor into anything here. Um, and this has been... Quite the sell-off. So let's see where we're at. Uh, from 6.15 a.m. Central to now, we've sold off about 40 points. Not bad. <laughs> and then, yeah, this is our opening range gap high. Lines up with the uh, lines up with the new week opening gap from this week, but this is the new week opening gap from last week, which also um, does line up with other imbalances and inefficiencies to the left. So these will all be solid targets on the way. Obviously, you know, we'll be we'll be well in profit and partials plenty of partials taken by then. So we don't really have to to worry too much, but <clears throat> yeah, let's delete some of this stuff. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on these lower time frames, guys. We'll see if SMT forms on these lower time frames, but yeah, obviously looking at even the bearish SMT from yesterday, um, with that four hour that we just looked at, it definitely looks like ES supposedly is the stronger. It's kind of funny how that flips. NQ is 
aggressively more bullish uh, structure-wise on the higher time frames than, than ES has been. So it's kind of funny to see that flip. <clears throat> but yeah, kind of kind of why it pays to, I mean, even, even just focusing on a couple things, like just focusing on the indices, isn't it funny how you can still miss stuff and you're not going to notice everything? So that's why I can't imagine... I can't imagine people really claim consistency when they're looking at, you know, 10 different pairs. There's no way. I'm at, you're missing even more then. But yeah, we worked down pretty close to this daily order block. I have this marked at the body, guys. So, you know, this is, you know, probably tapping into that wick. But I, I would like to see it tap into the body. Not sure how far we could go here. <laughs> Let's jump up to the five minute. And actually, why don't we do this? Yeah, so that same that same order block on NQ is up here inside of this inefficiency, so that's really kind of irrelevant. And then I guess you could say, I guess you could say we've we've closed all the inefficiencies now on on Dow Jones as well. Interesting to see how this order block holds. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna mark a line here at the bottom of this down close candle. All right, boom. Tapped into that daily order block, guys. So let's wait and see. We shall wait and see. I guess I'll get ready ahead of time. Great new order. Um, so yeah, just a little update for you guys. The We went down, obviously. I went down a little less than a half percent yesterday on our first trade and then made back uh, pretty much twice that on the trade yesterday. Got about eight handles for TP2. That was where the the low was. So I just, I got out there and, and good thing I did because it didn't, it didn't even give 10 handles. It gave about eight and a half, nine handles maybe at most. But yeah, so this is the update for you guys that hopped off, have hopped off after the first trade. We're uh, we're back, we're back in profit on the top step account after that uh, the reset from the rule change. So all is well, all is well. But yeah, guys, we're not gonna catch a falling knife. So what I want to wait and see is obviously some clear willingness and signs that we're gonna go up. You know, and I, I would like to see some displacement on multiple time frames. In all honesty, so until we really start to see that, there's you know there's no trade for us. We're just going to be sitting here waiting, uh, which is totally fine. But just to just to temper your guys' expectations, uh, I'm not interested in trying to jump on board with this selling off. Um, truthfully, the reasoning being is because we're we're pretty bullish on much higher time frames like the weekly and the monthly so it looks like we're starting to get some potential turning here so that's good we'll, we'll keep our eye on that but uh let's jump up here to like the weekly yeah so <clears throat> here's our swing low technically this could be where your market structure shift would take place but if you wanted to be picky and even if we were to factor in the monthly notice this swing high right here is what puts in this swing low right what do we have here? We have a strong, at one, this was displacement, it got filled in. We had a strong displacing candle up, closing above here. That's your that's your weekly market structure shift, bullish market structure, structure shift. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Uh, and then we go to the one month. Like, look at this. So to me, to me this looks awfully, um, awfully bullish, especially considering that weekly liquidity void hasn't even been tapped into yet um you know i would at least be bullish up to there and then if they're if we're going to turn i would expect it to kind of happen at that point it's expected though that we're going to get i mean this is how june closed and a lot of this came on you know that last day i mean it just absolutely ripped and it didn't even give a pullback that was when we were trying to get tgif on friday and it didn't even give a wick it just 
closed, heavy, heavy bullish. So, you know, you're expected to get a pullback to some extent. This is the opening of the next month candle for July. But yeah, to me, we're to me, we're pretty bullish on the on the higher time frames. So with that being said, if we were to go down to like the hourly or even like the four hour, you know, in order for in order for me to shift more like long term bearish again, you know, you'd almost have to see the same thing down here. You'd have to see a, a displacement down market structure shift below here and then, you know, see where we go from there. So, I mean, until then, I'm just expecting this to be a retracement into whichever level of discount, find your PD array and go. Um, you know, if we do get a deeper retracement into here, potentially we have this inefficiency down here, which lines up with this three week old, new week opening gap. So just all levels to, to keep in mind, but yeah, at this point, it's just it's just waiting for a setup. Where would I have the market structure shift on the one minute? Right now, right here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider this just because this isn't like this isn't an actual high. So this will this will help you guys probably. So. <clears throat> a high so let me point out uh, what a high looks like just for an example first so this would be I mean, I'll use this one this would be an actual good high and we got time to kill here so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll let you guys tell me why do you why is this a high and this one's not does somebody know why why is this one right here a high and why is this one not this one right here. <laughs> See, first try. First one, right and left candle lower. That's correct. So because this candle is higher than this candle and this one, this is your this is your three candle high. Yes, this is a little up move. This is a little up move that, that led to a little bit of a lower low, but it's not an actual high. It has to have this, it has to have this. Otherwise it's not a high. It's not a significant swing high. That's why, and it, this is not, this is not a sneak disc. This is not anything stupid. So don't twist, don't get it twisted. That's why, that's why trading this type of a BOS is BS. I, th I just thought that was, I thought that'd be tricky to say. That's kind of clever, wasn't it? BOS BS anyway. <clears throat> so now it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you know it can never work. Like, cause here's the deal: what have you already got going for you? You've already got going for us something in a much bigger perspective. What is that? You've had a bunch of sell side swept, tapped into a daily order block. Guess what? If you wanted to be really aggressive and you just kind of pulled a, a stop loss number out of thin air and you just say, oh, let me let me do a, a I don't know, 15 point stop and you're just, you're swinging, you could enter right off this daily order block and just hold it. But you just don't know how, you don't know, this is a falling knife right now until we've been proven otherwise. So like, you don't know how far it's gonna go. You know what I mean? So it's it's super aggressive, but it doesn't mean it can't work because you have other things already starting to form the trade. But now when we're fitting this all into a smaller time frame, you sneak, you know, you, I, I sorry, I saw, I saw the word sneak in the comments. Uh, you sneak on down to these smaller time frames, all right, and then you want to see some clear, uh, again, market structure shift, displacement on a one minute, you know, and then and then get your entry from there. One minute, two minute, three minute. These smaller time frames, you know. Yeah, I have, to, I have to put disclaimers now if it's a, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this is my market structure shift point for right now. But, you know, if new structure forms and we get a new high to form, um, then we'll be all right. 
funny as I just said that. As I just said that. This is something. It's not. It's not amazing. But we'll see. Yeah, if this if this can pull up, I'd like to see it displace a little higher and shift above here. Um, this could actually be the first gap we could potentially enter from. But until then, let's just wait because guys, it's nine fifteen right now. We just so the macro just finished up, by the way. And what did the macro do? It ran all the way to this daily order block. Excuse me. So honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see this kind of chop around for fifteen minutes, get us to nine thirty, which has been pretty common for us to see the actual turn during the hour. So what I wouldn't want to do, guys, is obviously, yes, there's a fair value gap that formed here. And yes, there's one that formed just now right here. But we know we've, we've been in these trades before. We know how this ends up a lot of times. When you, when you just get a little bit trigger happy and you mark up every little thing here on the one minute, right? We know what happens. We get in. You know, it doesn't mean this can't work out. I'm not saying it can't work out, right? We've taken trades like this before. But we know what can happen as well. One more sell-off. This is the inducement. Stops ran. And then we finally get the turn, right? So for me, what I'd rather do, like if this is all it's going to give, we'll find an entry later, you know? But what I'd rather do, since this has been such an aggressive sell-off, there's no reason we can't wait. We're not gonna. We're, we're most likely not gonna get left behind. I'm not gonna say you know nothing's guaranteed, but we're most likely not gonna get left behind. Very very unlikely, in my opinion, that we're gonna see, unless it's a huge news event. You're not really gonna see a straight V pattern, where you don't really get an opportunity. But, you know, it doesn't mean it can't work out. What I'd like to see is this to push higher, whether it's right now or whether it's in, you know, five, ten minutes. Maybe chop around a little bit more, run the low again, and then uh, give us a market structure shift. You know, if we do go put in a new low, at this point, this would be my market structure shift point, right? So we would just trail it. And this is this is your significant high because you have a lower to the left, lower to the right. Um, this would have been a significant low, and then this got ran right here. I'm going to make that easier to see. But yeah, until we start seeing some displacement, I'd like to see some displacement on some of these time frames to start lining up. And then we'll be we'll be good to go. But yeah, um, <clears throat> so we've got just a look ahead, guys. I, I haven't gone and back tested NFP. I was, I was thinking we could just do that on this session after all is said and done. So I, I know you guys, some of you guys have to leave and hop off and um, and get going after like an hour or so. But um, yeah, for those of you guys that are on still at the end, I don't know when. We'll, sit, we'll have to see how the session goes. I don't know when it'll be. But yeah, we'll go, we'll go take a look ahead at previous months of non-farm. Um, and NFP, obviously this is well into, you know, well before market open, well before our session that we're going to be getting these news releases. So we'll be all right, but I just want to go take a look at price action because we've, that's really been the only news day that we've taken off is, is NFP Fridays. And the only reason for it is because usually we're, we're in profit so much by the end of that week that it's like, why trade NFP, you know? So that's kind of been where we've where we've been, but this is an interesting week, obviously, because it's super short. So we uh, we can treat it like any other news event, which all it is is added volatility, right? So we'll go we'll go take a peek at that and see how price how price action was the previous couple months. Yeah. 
and see if we can form a little bit of a, um, I don't want to say bias, but something to anticipate, I guess. So interesting though, I, this doesn't really have to, this doesn't really have to take out this low. This is high resistance liquidity. This is a good example of high resistance liquidity. Um, it's on the one minute guys. So it's not like, you know, it's not the most prominent, but just because it's an example, it's high resistance because it, it, it ran this low, right? If this low was higher than this low, this would be still low resistance. And I would almost expect there'd be no chance that this would hold up. But because it is high resistance on the one minute, this could hold. I'd like to see then a displacement up, market structure shift above here for value gap entry and away we go. But yeah, it's only the one minute, so I wouldn't be like super surprised to see this get ran. That would make a lot of sense. And then this would be looked at as an inducement in my eyes. But yeah, you can already tell if we would have entered any of these fair value gaps, this would not be fun. Especially after seeing both of them get disrespected, price comes back into it again and holds inverse. So wouldn't be fun. Our stop would be below here, but if we were in this, I would be 90% positive that our stops would be getting hit. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense with the with the um, just looking at highs a little bit differently, um, you know. And I, and I and I don't like. There was a time where I used to look at highs like this as well, um, and and sometimes my mind still kind of messes with me. And I and I because I want to see a trade, like I I want to see a setup. And I know you guys are the same way, right? Like we're in silver bullet hour, right? We've gotten this huge sell off. We've we, can, we know what we're looking for. We got our bias. We want to see a trade. So therefore, we sometimes kind of try to convince ourselves that there's something there that isn't. And to me, this would have been a good example of that. We would have, you know, all it's here is, right? You know, here's our displacement. There's our market structure shift right here above this high. Boom, let's take it. Um, our stops may would have just been hit there, depending on your spread. I don't know. We'll see this. I, I kind of want to see this thing sell right off again. I would not, I would prefer it that it doesn't leave these relative equal lows. I would actually prefer that it ends up looking like how this looked with a little higher resistance liquidity run. That would be, that'd be great for us. We'd have a really, really strong protected stop at that point. But the other thing to consider is after a, a huge range over London, it's it's also possible to see, you know, let's say we get a setup here. We could see a nice little move, whether it's five handles, 10 handles, you know, who knows, right? Maybe our setup comes here. 10 handles would be up to these highs, this inefficiency. So maybe that's what it gives for AM session, comes back, sells off over lunch hour, early PM and then like PM session, you see the big, the big move. That's also possible. I know that, um, it's also not, you know, it's not totally uncommon when you have a big range over London that you get a, a small range over AM session, but PM sessions free and cleared today in the event that we <clears throat> are more focused on that instead of AM. Mm -mm. So I'll just kind of giving you guys all the all the expectations and the thought process. Oops. Lots to lots to consider and keep in mind, I guess. Um, but I guess in the meantime. It's been a little bit, so why don't we go take a peek, put our handy dandy sessions on, see where we're at. Ooh. One hour. Wow.
Yeah, maybe we can keep our eye on on uh, EU and GU. We'll see if they form SMT. I'd like to see if EU can take this low out. GU already did, so there is some SMT starting to form. That could be something we can keep an eye on. Take this off. So yeah, new market structure shift point for me is right here. Should be the same on the one minute. Yep, it is. Well, one minute you could you could say this. Yeah, just waiting, guys. It's coming up on nine thirty now. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything you want me to go over, let me know. Um, I feel like there's not really much else for me to talk about with today's current market. Truthfully, we're just we're waiting at this point, you know. And if price just continues to capitulate lower, then there's not much for us to <laughs> there's not much for us to say. Um, we'll be waiting for PM session, which is fine. Also, let me know, does my screen look super tiny for you guys or is this all right? Basil, you asked me this yesterday and I answered it. Do you remember what I said? I All right, I'll give you the full I'll give you the full run through. I don't remember the exact day I bought it. Um, I paid two renewals on it. The first, the first um, week that I had it, for those of you guys that have been trading with me the entire time since I started the Top Step Combine, you guys know that I got absolutely wrecked. Um, even the the days that we took winning trades, I like didn't take them on the Top Step for whatever reason. One day I couldn't log in. I had technical difficulties. The one day I like missed the button like I was trying to click both on my MetaTrader and on this um, and clicked it and basically missed it so stupid little stuff like that happened to me my first week not making excuses I'm just giving you guys all the facts and um, every losing trade I took on the top step account and lo and behold I was down like two and a half percent my first week the the max loss is three percent so I almost almost blew the whole thing up the first week which is fine <laughs> But um, anyway, then turned it around, got back to break even roughly a little bit in profit, like a half percent. First renewal came out, all good. And then got to uh, five and a half percent in profit. Six percent is the profit target. So I was a half percent from passing. We caught one of those trendy days. I lost one and a half percent. I went from five and a half percent in profit to four percent in profit. And then got back to within, I was just kind of teetering back and forth. We had a little bit of a choppy performance week, The I think the following couple weeks. I don't know. Anyway, I, was, I went back and forth between like 3% profit and 5% profit like two, two different times. And then was 4.5% away or 4% away somewhere in there right when the top step rolled out the new um, rules. And... I was still on phase one, so therefore um, they reset me back from 4% in profit to break even, which was 100K for this account. And now I'm currently up a little less than a half percent <clears throat> on that. So yeah, that's been the, that's been the entire lifespan of, of the Top Step account. Frustrating start to it. I had, a lot of, I had a lot of issues, technical difficulties, just because I think part of it was I didn't know what I was doing. Um, just connecting everything to I'm, I'm not I'm not technically savvy like you know it is what it is 
So anyway, I was I probably didn't know what I was doing. It was probably a little bit me. Um, I will say one of the days that I had technical difficulties, I couldn't log in, and then we caught a we caught an amazing trade. It was like one of those trades. That it went. It was like we entered in the first two minutes of the session, and it went straight to final take profit like within thirty minutes. And I didn't take it on the on the account because I couldn't log in. So like stuff like that was happening, in the beginning. But it was because my first renewal came out that time. And then it turns out when your renewal goes through, at least if you're on TradingView, it happened to me. I had to go back into Tradeovate and I had to go like re-add on TradingView. So like it kept saying unauthorized when I'd log in here and it wouldn't let me in. But I didn't know that, right? Now I know that. So that was, like you could say that was kind of my fault. Because that's probably how it always has been for everybody. <clears throat> Once learned, sweet, break a structure, order block for value gap and enter. What are the other stuff you would learn after that, like about news? Um, I think the biggest thing you could ever spend time paying attention to is um, higher time frame draw on liquidity. Daily time frame, weekly time frame. I'll be honest, I don't really go to the monthly that much. But um, like this time, like you guys just saw me open the monthly chart. That's probably like the first time I've opened the monthly chart in... I looked at it one other time, probably in the last two months. Just really quick, just take a peek at it and see where it's at. But I would say that's probably the biggest thing, you know, is, is identifying where the next draw is. So for me, like just looking at this chart right now, this could be wrong, but I'm looking at smaller time frame. Currently, at least this also plays into what I would like to see. Currently, I believe the next draw is still lower. I still believe the next draw is down here. Um, we had this push up long wick and then we get displacing price back down. We're inside of a fair value gap as we speak. So yeah, to me, this current draw is still lower. Why we, cause we've continued to just show reasoning that we're going to go, we're going to continue lower. We put relative equal lows here. That's a draw displacing price towards it. For value gap, respects the gap beautifully. And look where we're headed. Um, so <clears throat> once that happens, let's come up here a little bit. For the five minute, 15 minute, you know, at this point, these shorter time frame draws are, you know, on the 15 minute chart, you've got obviously some highs on like lower time frames, one minute, two minute, three minute, all the way up to the five minute on this little price run. But otherwise, you've got things that you can expect to be redelivered to. Opening range gap low, yes. Inefficiency right below it, amazing. You have this high right above opening range gap low. Where does it, what's right above that? Another inefficiency. So when we get the schematic for the entry, where can we expect the next draw to be? All these levels. So that's kind of what we're bringing every every session. Like, you know, that's why Mondays are tricky sometimes is because we're looking at these higher time frames, you know, and we're, we're trying to figure out, okay, where does the market need to go? Where would it want to go? And in the beginning of the week, it's a little bit harder to decide because there's always going to be draws on liquidity higher and lower. There's always going to be that. You know, that's why the beginning of the week is a little bit more challenging than later in the week. Because now later in the week, look what we've got. We've got a lot more clarity. Market's already done a lot. And now we're, we're taking out some sell side objectives. So to me, to me, the, the later in the week is always a little bit more clear. But yeah, that's what, that's what I would do personally. Um, otherwise, otherwise, bro, it's just, just time on the charts. You know, you'll you'll maybe you'll maybe be able to modify some entry techniques. Um, this is a model that's super consistent in my opinion. Um, it's it's rule based. It's not it's not subjective. Where you're gonna be like, well, I mean, it can be. I mean, you can overthink some shit and like take a trade like this. But for the most part, if you actually know what you're looking for, it's not subjective. It's objective. It's rule based. It's I want to see this, this, and this. My entry goes here. My stop loss goes here every time. 
and where you, sh you shoot for the same things every time, opposing liquidity in the form of imbalance, in the form of highs or lows. Um, maybe, maybe I would spend some time, if you don't already, at least, at least take a little bit of time each week and, and factor in like new week opening gap. Um, pay attention to opening range gap uh, as well. And we've always paid attention to it. Like you guys have seen me toggle back and forth between regular trading hours and electronic trading hours quite a bit. Um, but I've now recently started also annotating it on the chart. And it's, you know, it's, it's good for me to even just see it, or just a reminder constantly of where the levels are, where the high is, where the low is. Um, things that you'll be able to tweak with the entry model would be uh, once you get really good and really confident, maybe you can start playing around with stuff like inverse gaps, right? Most of you already play with order blocks and breaker blocks, which are basically the same as a fair value gap versus an inverse fair value gap. Um, but that would be really it. Uh, draws on liquidity, you know, news. But again, don't don't give yourself too much, bro. Like you're not you're never gonna know everything. And sometimes the shit's gonna be contradicting. So it's like, what's the point? You're just you're just gonna be driving yourself absolutely wild. Uh, when I when I take a trade, when I lose, I wanna at least like if I were to be put on a trial stand and in court. Watch this get ran through now. If I were to get put on a trial stand in court, I would love to be able to just like every trade you take, you should be you should act like if you were to be interrogated in court over that trade, could you defend the trade you took? And if I can do that with 100% conviction, then I don't care if I take a loss. It's it's also unreasonable and unrealistic that you should expect that you're going to be right all the time. Give your give yourself some grace and understand that you're a human being, um, and even if you weren't a human being, if you were a robot, even robots get this shit wrong. AI gets it wrong. And yeah, that's why that's why in my opinion, risk management is name of the game. Um, the longevity of your trading career is going to be. 100% completely correlated to the level of discipline and risk management that you follow. That's it. Which to me is, that's why I like trading so much. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to get like philosophical or whatever, but like, dude, it just literally correlates everything in life. How, how good your trading is depends on your discipline, your risk management, your patience, all those stuff, all those intangible things. Does that does that not apply to everything else in your life too? Your relationships, your fitness, your faith, your you name it. And you get you get people that, you know, their trading's a mess. Their their emotions are all out, out of whack. Well, usually their life's a mess. I'm not, you know, I don't know, it's, it is what it is. I can tell you my, my, I don't know. I, I feel like I have a lot of stability. My life's kind of boring to be honest now. Um, but when I was really sporadic, emotional roller coaster, I could, I mean, you look back, it was just like my life was the most chaotic probably, you know? So <clears throat> it, it correlated for me at least. But yeah, I think there's a lot to, a lot to be learned beyond, beyond price action in these charts. But yeah, so here's the inducement. Saw this sell off. I'm sure there's plenty of plenty of smart money traders that were liquidated just now. Guess what? Here's your break of structure. There's your entry. Maybe you entered right here. Maybe you waited for a pullback to the gap, to the order block. Who knows? Either or. At most, you got four handles out of it. And bada bing, bada boom. 
But yeah, sometimes this will work. But to me, I, I'd rather, I'd rather miss out on the sometimes to avoid this. New macro coming in 10 minutes. Guys, we've been sitting here for 40 minutes and just watching this. Uh, where is 9 a.m.? Let's go market. Hey, man, some days some days we get the, the entry right off the rip. Some days we don't. Um, I mean, I guess now that I'm looking at it, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't bullish at all. So this is sort of irrelevant, but if you wanted to just look at price, the reason I wasn't um, bearish at all was because we were already getting into a discount. This is what this blue line was. This is equilibrium. So, but you guys can see, obviously, price displaced lower below this low. Market structure shifts. Where does it pull back to? Gap right at 9 a.m. Like, yeah, this potentially, I'm sure ICT himself might come on Twitter in a little bit and go, here's your show. Here's <laughs> Here's your shovel bullet, but you guys aren't ICT. I'm not ICT. We don't have 30 years of trading experience. You might be able to roll all of us together. We might not have. Well, I'm sure maybe we would probably. I'm being a little bit exaggerated now, but um, but it makes sense why we didn't take the trade as well, right? We're at equilibrium. We're working into a discount. We're not looking to sell in discount. It's right at equilibrium. You could you could argue that this is still premium. But we're being, we're being awfully technical. And it, to me, an A-plus trade isn't one where you have to be, like, technical for. It's where it's like, yeah, everything makes sense. So, yeah. This would be, for me, a good one-minute market structure shift. Truthfully, um, on the one-minute, on the one-minute, though. Not the two-minute. Two-minute, this would be what I want to see. And hopefully they come they come side by side. That sounds kind of bad, but <laughs> hopefully it happens all together. We'll see. I'm just I'm just getting ready for us to anticipate some stuff. But yeah, with this macro coming in seven minutes, wouldn't mind wouldn't mind letting that be what gives us our setup. I actually think I have a template for this. How about that? We'll see, though, guys. <clears throat> I, I would like to see. Um, I'm not totally opposed. I'm not totally opposed to this high. Oh, geez. But it's kind of going to depend how we trade through it. Like to see it displaced through. Either market structure stuff here. <clears throat> if it does, great. Um, if it doesn't, then I would like it to put in some relative equal lows or equal highs, um, and that could be like our our draw in the short term. But feeling pretty good after seeing this happen. You know, putting relative equal lows, took it out. So to me, it's far less risky now for us to be a little bit more aggressive. And keep in mind, we're still we're still inside this daily order block. We've worked we've worked pretty, well, not pretty deep, but we've we've worked a little ways now into the body. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna get ready though. Actually, real quick. You guys see what I see? Wow. Anyway, yeah, we got SMT between NQ and ES, uh, if you didn't see what I saw. Let 
back to the one minute. <clears throat> See how far is this? All right, yeah, guys, you know what? I will take a stab at this because it is light risk. I'm going to take a stab at getting long inside that gap. It's about two and a half handle stop. Let's go one tick in. It's about a two tick gap, half point. If something else forms up here after, you know, we might get that market structure shift, great. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, we're going to target four is five. Five's good for me. This is this order block right here. That's good TP1. Um, or you could even do this high, seven and a quarter. But this is a decent TP1 if you want to stick to normal. Normal rules. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter inside that gap, guys. It's light risk because it's only, if you use a fixed slot size, it's only two and a quarter. Which is why I'm willing to send it. Um, but yeah, if it doesn't work out, we're going to know right away it was because we didn't wait for this. But anyway, yeah, guys, I'm in. Light risk, two and a quarter, handle stop. <sighs> like to see it re disrespect this now going back up. I don't want to see, yeah, I don't want to see it close below. That would not be good. Um, all right, so my entry is 44.24, so 44.29 is my five handle mark, which is up here. Um, yeah, seven handles is this high. Uh, and then yeah, 10 handles would actually be up here. I actually like that. I like this level a lot. I actually like all of this up here. All right, good sign for now, guys. Not out of the wood yet, or not out of the wood yet? Not out of the mud yet. Let's, let's get this displacing above here. Feel a lot better. Um, we also had that SMT, remember, with, with NQ, so that also is something we can add into the reasoning for the trade. Macro coming in two, in one minute, actually. Would like to see it deliver through these levels of buy side liquidity. No, not here. But yeah, in the market maker's hands now, guys. Good work. We're bouncing right off this one minute market structure shift we used currently. Get going. Being difficult. Macro started. Let's see what happens. See if we're right. Uh, 
I'll feel better if we can displace above here. We will be able to take a, a a deep breath and relax if we can get this. I mean, we should be relaxed anyway, but you guys know what I'm saying. Bro, come on. NQ is still holding here for now. Those trades, huh? Oh, boy, not looking good, guys. Stop loss was hit. We went one tick below the low. Um, let's screenshot this. So yeah, two and a half handle stop for me. Um, not too bad, quarter percent. It was light risk, so I thought it was worth taking a stab at. Well, we'll see what we get here. Kind of unfortunate. I mean, we're expecting the run with the macro. But it's running us out and then maybe setting up the move But anyway, yeah, just to recap, all the reasons for the trade, sell side liquidity sweep in a daily order block, displacing price up, market structure shift on the one minute only, fair value gap left behind here. Had a little glimmer of hope, but wasn't enough. But here will be the nice thing. You know, I'm gonna we're going to wait for another setup, obviously. If we get one, we get one. Um, five handles, five handles is uh, a two R from the loss we just took. So even if you took your full position or half your position off at TP one five handles on the next trade, you've made back your losses. And then anything beyond that's profit. So that's why the fix, the fixed uh, contract or lot size has always, you know, made sense to me, but. 
Anyway, reassessing here. <clears throat> this would be, well, basically where that daily order block level is. I'm just going to mark this, though. We're just pushing lower still. But yeah, basically this high right here is going to be the market structure shifts on the one and the two minute. So yeah, let's see if we get a, another setup, guys, with the macro coming out of the macro. And if there's nothing by the end of the macro that looks promising or worth taking, we'll hop off and we'll trade PM session. But if it's any consolation for you guys, we walk through how we avoided a loss here. You know, so this would have been another three and a half or three and a quarter, depending on your fill. <laughs> um. You know, and this would have been, if you're just firing away entries, obviously it would have been a loss there. But yeah, to me, this was the first real, like, setup. Mm-hmm. Plus that SMT divergence was kind of appealing, but it looks like that is going to be potentially all done with. Here you had a really nice market structure shift above these highs, this high, but then you ended up getting stalled out here. Um Yeah, we'll do it we'll do a stream if we or if I see like a setup worth like if I see the market seeming to be setting up for um a good trade. And if we do a stream it'll be beginning of or right after New York lunch, so probably like twelve thirty to one central. One thirty to two Eastern. You know, but who knows? I mean, I know, like I said, I know some of you guys have to hop off after like being on here for an hour. But you know, I was a little disappointed. Half the call jumped off yesterday after we lost, and then you guys missed it on the winning trade. Could be unfortunate, just kind of un unfortunate for some people that had to jump off and go. But I know there's at least there's at least a couple guilty parties that were just like, oh, this fucking Tyler guy he doesn't know how to fucking trade. I'm getting off here. And then you're and then you're kicking yourself because you saw TP two hit in the chat. So you know, this one setup is valid, but we're we're again we're trying to find entries in the in the bigger picture. And yeah, it was risky. Far less risky than anything over here. And it was super light risk. That's why we put it on. Quarter percent. Like, I wasn't even a half percent of profit on this. I'm still in profit. So, all good.
Yeah, we took one trade already. We took one trade. Uh, we sat through all this, and we kind of called out this was going to be inducement. So we sat out here, and we saw everybody, all the stops get ran there, and then we saw this one-minute displacement up. We looked at this as our one-minute market structure shift. This was our entry. And then we got like, I don't even know how many points this was. About two points of profits, and then that was it. Peace out, Craig. All right, so we're about halfway through this macro now. We got about nine minutes left. And if we see this continue to sell, um, I'll just be done for the morning. Take my little 2.5 handle loss. <laughs> and go abuse my body in the gym. I'm so mad. And be back better than ever. But yeah, if we can get a setup here, it'd be nice. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Cause I ain't about to miss it. You know? <clears throat> SMT still holding as of right now. On NQ and Dow looks awfully similar to ES. I don't know, Kitsch. I don't really trade oil. I, I genuinely don't know how that correlates. And I guess you would tell me, here's here's a here's a, here a maybe a way you can connect the dots. You can tell me if oil and gold correlate, because if they do, usually you would expect when when gold goes up, that means dollars falling, and that also usually means that the indices are rising as well. So if there's correlation there, then there there should be correlation with indices. I would I would expect because it's all it's all commodities. All right, so let's do this as well. All right, so here's this macro. Time period. Starting to see some movement back up now after running out the low. So yeah, I guess the only thing we could have done different would be Let's see, what time was our entry? Four minutes before the macro. That's what I think we could have done different is maybe wait for that, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna s take that with a grain of salt because I don't wanna 
make you guys think that this is an invalid setup because it was not. And there's been plenty of trades we've taken where the macro runs us to our targets, right? But yeah, that's the only thing we could have done different outside of maybe waiting for a little bit higher time frame market structure shift, like the two minute. But to me, yeah, it was so, it was so light risk that it was it was at least worth it. It was a little bit more aggressive, but if it would have been a full fledged like five handles, probably wouldn't have taken it. We got a three minute. Might get a nice three minute gap to form here. This would be that three minute market structure shift right here. With SMT still remaining on ES and NQ. Um, let's go ahead and. So I'll mark both these up, and it's up to you guys if you want to take NQ instead. I know some of you do anyway. But just to watch both of them. Yeah, no market structure shift as of yet. The two-minute market structure shift at least is above this high. So if we were to enter off of this one-minute gap right now, it would basically be the same setup we had last time. The only difference would be is that the macro had already taken place. I'd like to see this gap left open personally. If it's not left open um, and we push higher from it, well, one, that would have been what we were expecting here. And then two, we'll have to, we'll have to find a, diff a different entry. But yeah, we already lost on that on that type of a setup once today, so I guess we'll be a little bit more patient. But yeah, as far as three minute goes, there was a three minute gap here on NQ. No market structure shift, but we do have the three minute gap. We'll see though. Yeah, if this if this pushes through this low, I think we'll just hop off. But yeah, this has been the the price action so far since this session has begun. Not blaming price either. That was expected with the huge range from London. And I guess, well, New York as well. Very beginning early New York with the uh, the news releases. ever take that low? I don't think it did. Wow. <laughs> I 
If anything, it looks kind of bearish. Already tapped into that as well. Yo, what the fuck? <sighs> All right, we put one more low in. Um, we'll see how this reacts. Yeah, crazy. Well, we avoided the falling knife the best we could. We didn't get away totally unscathed. Got away with a minor little paper cut. Um, yeah, never never did give that energetic displacing price back up. It looks like it kind of did, though, on NQ. Slightly higher time frames, but once you get even to, like, the five-minute, not so much. Well, that same setup was present here. So yeah, that would have been tricky. I mean, if you were if you were trying to take an entry today on any of these bullish, it yeah, it didn't work out. All good though. Yeah, I mean, if you guys if you guys see ICT tweeting silver bullet here, we'll know why. Um, but yeah, just wasn't looking to get wasn't looking to get short. Truthfully. with where we're at but yeah a little bit of a falling knife today funny how it makes it uh so difficult it induces a lot of people like i said we didn't get we didn't get away totally unscathed but we're probably better off than a lot of people believe it or not um so here's the high from well, i guess that's no that's yesterday right no what the hell Thursday, anyway, so here's the high from the morning. We've sold off about 46, 47 handles and, and going still. Um, one hour. Oh, wow. I do think our best bet would be to hop off for now. I'm gonna go back to the one minute and we'll I'll take one last look at it, but if you guys remember, from when was this? Um, Wednesday, June twenty eighth, during PM session. This is the one hour chart. So if you guys can recall back, this sell off. We actually this wick. It was actually this wick. Um, but we ended up catching a sell, and we were aiming for all this sell side. If you guys remember. And that's all that's all been left open still. So I almost wonder if this is about to head down there. And wipe that out. During uh, the rest of this morning session, maybe New York lunch. I don't know, that'd be quite the range to be honest. Kind of would expect a bounce between there. All right, so one last peek here. This SMT's hanging on by a thread, but it's basically obsolete. Two minute, one minute. So here's what I'll say. I'll, I'll have my eye on this probably for the next 
30 minutes or so while I upload the recording from this session to YouTube. But otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of anticipating there not really being much of anything. This macro did not deliver or begin the delivery to any of these prices. It All it did was just run out the low and small retracement just to continue back lower. So yeah, let's hop off for now. There's, there's not really much else for us to sit on here for. And I'll keep you guys updated in the Discord if there's anything um, still for AM session that forms because it might. You know, nothing saying that it can't. So if that happens, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise, I'll also be looking to trade at PM session as well. Is there any questions in the chat before we hop off? Oh, sorry. I'm just hoping in the chat now. I missed your... I'm still trying to understand OBs. Where are we in terms of that one-hour order block? How do we interpret the movement through it? I'd rather not fight the trend that we know how it goes. Yeah. All right, Kitch, really quick, I'll go take a look at. So when you say one hour order block, I guess I'm. I guess I don't know what exactly you're referring to. To me, we're in a daily order block, and that daily order block is here. Last two consecutive down candles, they took out a low. What did you see afterward? Higher prices, little market structure shifts. Um, I would actually, I wouldn't consider this the market structure shift on the daily. I would consider it this. And we did get a run on this high. We displaced up to it. So now we're, we're turning back into this. Or, or, this entire range is the order block though. That's the problem. But we are at an order block in discount. So this is a valid PD array. Um... How you would interpret price working through it? Well, it's the daily time frame. Keep that in mind. So there's a lot of real estate. There's a lot of real estate for this to do what it wants. I mean, it could give it could give plenty of small little moves on these smaller time frames that could yield five handles. It could yield ten handles, maybe multiple times, and it could still end up ultimately pushing a little bit lower maybe to like mean threshold of this order block, which would basically just be 50%. So if you were to mark that up, it lines up with this um, fair value gap. I believe this was on the four hour. Yeah, so this four hour gap is where that lines up with, which is mean threshold of that daily order block. So that would make sense. Um, you know, whenever I whenever I trade order blocks on like a smaller time frame, I'm always entering off of the open, not the 50%. So, like I said, you can expect there to be plenty of even if it does want to continue lower, you can still expect there to be little bounces. Um, but you just don't know when that actual reaction will be coming out of here, right? That's why you have to take this into consideration, understand where we are at. We know where we're at, right? Discount, order block. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with us trying to fit in our long trade in these smaller time frames. And, you know, I guess after seeing a sell-off like this, the conservative thing to do would be, you know, not just wait for a one minute market structure shift, which is, is what I did today, right? And I'm not I'm not hiding from that. That's what I did. And uh, partially due to the where we were at with time and price, really wanted to see that macro run higher. You know, I really felt like we could get, it was a good enough trade to, to yield five or 10 points. Um, but yeah, I guess the other thing would be just wait for a little bit of a bigger shift. Like, don't be worried about uh, having it run away, you know, without you by always looking at the one minute. But you could even, you could even like to, temper yourself and hold yourself back from firing away trades one thing that you could do is just kind of let things play out on somewhat of a higher time frame like the five minute right or even you could wait for the 15 minute right and obviously that would have been the right that would have been the right move today in hindsight But like I said, it was it was it was light enough risk where I felt like it was it was worth it was worth hopping on, given the time where we're at 
coming into the macro and everything considered. And, you know, we got a little bit of profit, but ultimately no cigar. But hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, and then I guess the only other thing to mention would be usually when you can expect an order block to fail. <clears throat> and like I said, usually it doesn't, there's, there's never a, never a guarantee in anything is when you start seeing prices, you know, come down to mean threshold, like we're on the daily. So you'd have to use the daily to reference this. If you saw a daily candle come down and like close, like pretty deep below mean threshold, probably decent sign that this is not about to hold you would actually kind of expect or hope like a news release event would come out like maybe nfp tomorrow or whatever spike down boom and then go and then that would be absolutely beautiful because then you have pretty much everything you need you have all your you have all your convictions for your best possible long at that point Because your bias really shouldn't be flipping, in my opinion, until after all that gets um, invalidated. <clears throat> Feel imbalances in the kitchen? <laughs> all right. See you, Sergio. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing much, guys. To me, we're about to range up. Um, and even if we start seeing some things move around, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. But realistically, I would like to see... You know, once you start seeing some strong energy back up on like these slightly higher time frames, three minute, five minute, all the way up to maybe even the 15 minute, get a nice bullish uh, closing candle. That would be a good sign for us because this has all been straight, straight down today so far. So, all right, I'll keep you guys updated for the PM session. Um, again, we'll, I'll take a look at the market. If there's like really nothing, like I genuinely don't like anything I see for whatever reason, there won't be a session and I'll just like keep an eye on it and post in the discord. But otherwise, yeah, I would have, I would anticipate that we could do a session after, uh, after New York lunch. But again, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on everything, you know, in the, uh, in the discord. All right. If you guys need anything today, reach out. Um, otherwise I will talk to y'all later. Peace out y'all have an amazing day.